Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I'm Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. You know, we say all the time here at Washington Gun Law, we do not want to tell you guys how to think. We just want to give you all the stuff to think about. And this is what we're going to try to do with this video. Now, we know that rumors can get a little out of control out here in the youtube -iverse, but when it comes to social media platforms, there are others where rumors can spin out of control much quicker much more devastatingly, uh, but probably no platform will allow rumors to run completely rampant other than Reddit. And what uh, led me to do in this video was a lot of my viewers saying, hey, I've been reading on Reddit about this, I've been reading on Reddit on this, and it was the same thing over and over and over. And it has to do with Illinois' uh, brutal assault weapon ban, and in particular, what's going on with the appeal and the injunctions and the fact that everything's being consolidated into the Seventh Circuit now, it has a little bit to do with the city of Naperville matter and all of that. But it has a lot of people speculating that perhaps there is one particular justice that could do some devastating things to gun control and might be willing to do it. And I want to kind of correct the record and get everyone back here to a state of reality. So today, let's spend a few very important minutes and let's talk about, could one justice actually kill assault weapon bans? Okay, before we get going down the road, we're going down. Proud to announce that this video is being brought to you by Legal Heat. That's right, America's largest educator of concealed carry classes, Legal Heat has now taught over 250,000 people nationwide since they started doing this in 2005. Now listen, for all my Washington viewers, you can find a class in any one of these locations right here. If you're living outside the state of Washington, congratulations, chances are you are living much freer than we are, but you too can find a class right near your own backyard by visiting them at mylegalheat.com. That's mylegalheat.com. Now, most importantly, if you find a class and you want to sign up, no matter where you are, use the promo code Washington Gun Law. That's all one word, Washington Gun Law, and you will receive 15% off. So for more information, visit my good friends at mylegalheat.com. Okay, so here's the issue we're talking about. In the matter of Beavis versus City of Naperville, as well as all the other litigation that's going on around uh, Illinois' very evil and sinister and nefarious assault weapon ban, these cases have all begun to consolidate with the Seventh Circuit now. Now, that doesn't particularly bode well if you take a look at the makeup of the bench, but that's not what we're talking about. As we know, there has been this on again, off again, on again, off again injunction, which has had people in Illinois tasting freedom, only to have it taken from them, to taste it again, to have it taken from them. And now there are some people who tasted it said, oh yeah, we're gonna take that and your freedom and your guns from you January 1st. And you can check out these videos right here that talk about that. Now, now, one of the big deals is these injunctions, right? Because we know that in order for us to get an injunction, that is a big fat pause button on the enforcement of the law, we have to show to the court, one, that we are is suffering irreparable harm. So somebody like Rob Beavis, who can't sell 85% of his inventory anymore because of a city ordinance and is about this close to going out of business, yeah, he can show irreparable harm. The other thing you have to show, though, is that you're likely to prevail on the merits. That is, you are likely to win, okay? And so when we see injunctions granted, not only is it good for the here and now, but it's also good for how things look in the future. Well, there was an injunction on the Illinois assault weapon ban. The city of Naperville ordinance has never been enjoined, and that lasted for all of about five days until it was stopped by a federal court. Now everything's in front of the Seventh Circuit and there's this rumor kicking around and this part of the rumor is true is that there was a petition which there was by the National Association of Gun Rights which is representing Rob Beavis in the Naperville matter. They applied for review to the United States Supreme Court of the denial to keep the injunction in place. So follow me. There was an injunction, laws pause, then, and everyone runs out and buys their assault weapons, right? Then all of a sudden the injunction is lifted, okay? And now when everyone's back under the Iron Curtain of Illinois, what happens is, is that the group representing Mr. Beavis against the city of Naperville actually applied to the United States Supreme Court and said, we want you to take a look at that. Now, since it came out of the Seventh Circuit, it's assigned to a particular justice. The justice it's assigned to is Amy Coney Barrett. Yes, is she very pro Second Amendment? She most definitely is. Read her concurring opinion in Brewer. In many ways, I think she actually got it better than anybody there. Okay, 
But here's the thing that you need to understand, okay? And this is the thing you need to understand. Here's what Justice Coney Barrett can do, okay? She can rule that, yes, I do believe that there's irreparable harm and the plaintiffs are likely to prevail, and she could reinstate that injunction. Now, there is nowhere really for the state of Illinois or the city of Naperville to appeal from there, and so that injunction would remain in effect pending the outcome of this litigation. That is one thing she could do. Now, here's the other thing she can do is what she can do is she can refer this matter to the entire panel of nine justices on the United States Supreme Court, herself included, and they collectively could decide whether the injunction remains in place or not. But here's the thing that she can't really do, okay? And this is what was kicking around on Reddit. And even if she could, you got to understand where Justice Coney Barrett is on the bench, where she is on the pecking order. She is a fairly new justice. Now, I think she's performed exceptionally well on the bench. I think it was an excellent appointment by then-President Trump. But here's the thing. If she had the ability to single-handedly strike down assault weapon bans nationwide from one justice out of the United States Supreme Court, would she yield that power? And then let me ask you all, would you want any one justice to actually yield that power? So the likelihood, even if she could do it, that she would do such a thing is incredibly remote. The political fallout would be tremendous, far beyond anything that the United States Supreme Court has ever dealt with in the past. I know that shouldn't be part of the consideration, but listen, that is part of the equation and this is how the game is played. The other thing is, is that you need to understand that this case and all the varying rules rulings that we're beginning to get out of Washington, out of Oregon, out of California, and waiting for the rulings coming out of Judge Benitez, there is obviously going to be an absolute hodgepodge of rulings as it relates to the constitutionality of assault weapon bans. The case is going to be absolutely right to have multiple cases consolidated to go to the United States Supreme Court. And candidly, like the last couple chapters in Stephen King's The Stand, I think we are finally coming to that final battle between good and evil as it relates to this particular issue. Now, the state of Illinois, just for giggles here, is arguing that assault weapons can be banned because they are not protected under the common use test developed in District of Columbia v. Heller. Now, that has uh, Dudley Brown, the president of the National Association for Gun Rights, um, very sharp worded quotes in response to this, some of which are kind of humorous and I'm going to share them with you because he and I obviously think very alike. Now, Mr. Brown is actually representing Mr. Beavis against the city of Naperville. But when asked about some of this, his responses included, now I know they'll claim that AR-15 didn't exist back when the founding fathers were there. Well, by that train of logic, the very equipment we are using right now to record this interview isn't covered by the First Amendment. And, and that is exactly right. These people who want to claim that the Second Amendment only protects the types of firearms that were in existence in the late 1700s fail to recognize that then the First Amendment would have significant uh, limitations as would the Fourth Amendment, Fifth Amendment, Eighth Amendment, and so on based upon what we understood the capabilities to be in the late 1700s. Now, Mr. Brown was also very quick to point out that, hey, listen, they can't come up with any historical analogs and the stuff they're coming up with, well, it's complete crap. This is how he put it. The Illinois Attorney General is not only spitting on the Constitution, but apparently he's also a historical illiterate. The Second Amendment has always applied to a wide variety of arms, including AR-15s and various types of ammunition. And once again, I completely agree with Mr. Brown. Now, what's the moral of the story? What's the point I want you to take from all of this? It's this. Can Justice Connie Barrett make a difference in Illinois? She most definitely can. She could reinstate this injunction in Illinois. You may be able to live free for a while until your governor starts bragging again about using your gun registry to round up guns. Could Justice Coney Barrett send this to the full court and have them review it? Yes, they could, but it would likely be limited to whether or not the injunction is possible. Can Justice Coney Barrett just sua sponte, all on her own, from the bench, strike down assault weapon bans anywhere? No, she can't. That's not how the system is designed. And candidly, if the shoe were on the other foot, we would not want a single justice doing that the other way. Listen, you may have more questions about what's going on here or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights. Now, you guys should know how to get a hold of Washington gun law by now, but if you don't, that's okay because that information is right there in the description box. But in the meantime, I do want all of you to remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation, how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay safe.